So, uh, Seiji, so just tell us a little bit more about how we can um, improve upon the beliefs and the biases and all that stuff, how we can clean that up a little bit more. In our yeah, I mean, I, again, like I was saying, I think um, there needs to be more awareness on this issue and training, mm -hmm. but everything starts with leadership, right? If, if an right. organization has the leadership and they're on board, but the commitment itself is not enough. And that's the thing. A lot of leaders will stand up and say, we're committed to diversity and inclusion, right? And that's right. just lip service. We need to have accountability systems in place. And so there's right. just a lot holistically that needs to be done. Then, they, then they'll say they're committed to it. And then they'll say that we've got the accountability in place, but then they don't dedicate the time and resources to that, to that mission, right? So right. Trainings need to change. Your workplace investigations need to be done differently. I mean, there's a lot of work. So what I'm out there telling people is, look, I'm not saying it's going to be easy to yeah. get there. It's going to be hard work to get there, but it's completely possible. I mean, what other way of looking at it is there? Yeah. Right? So you just can work on all the components. And if you do it in that way, that you can get there. And we've seen organizations. I mean, I've worked with, seriously, I've worked with companies. Their cultures are so toxic that in my mind, I'm like, Let's just fire everybody and start over because that's going to be easier, <laughs> right? But I've seen them turn it around, so it's totally possible. Yeah, 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 absolutely. So what are the things that you were mentioning there are things that we could do? Do you have a, a list of steps where people can, employers can start here and work their way down? Do you have that kind of a program or how do you work with your clients? Yeah, I mean, I do, uh, we, you know, I, I talk to each client individually, right? So mm -hmm. we first talk about what their culture is and what their goals are. I mean, it, it, we need to look at what they have to figure out where their vulnerabilities are, right? And then talking to them about how can they mitigate the risk. And, and I always make it very clear, look, you know, it's legal compliance is one piece of that, but there is a lot more to that. So then looking at each of these various components and identifying what are sound policies and practices and right. so then setting up those procedures training is just one aspect of it but also i think you know again it's it's really kind of empowering the employees that's the key i mean mm -hmm. you can't say I, I love it when people just throw hr under the bus or the lawyers under the bus but it's, it's got to be everybody We've, we're all in this together you can't just okay. stand by as a bystander and say oh i work in this environment it's, it's no good but then my question is well what are you doing about it yeah what is your piece of it? What are you responsible for? And are you doing that? Right. Right. Yeah. So I think everybody's behavior within that organization needs to align back to their mission and right. value statements. And I think right. that's just lip service. I mean, I've talked to, I've done trainings where I've asked supervisors, what is your mission statement of your company? And they're like, I don't know. <laughs> I'm like, okay, how can your behavior be aligned to that mission statement if you don't even know what it is? Right. Yeah. So it's basic, but yeah. Yeah, yeah. I think what happens, especially in tech companies, is that they create all these mission statements and do all that stuff. They grow very fast, and then all of a sudden they go, "Oh my gosh!" You know, employees are you know kind of creating a ruckus. You know, what's going on? And then they look at, you know, they've grown so fast they've forgotten about all the people that helped them to get to be very successful, that's right. Mm -hmm. right? Yeah. So I don't know if that's just tech companies, but just my visualization or my how I see things. But I think that's what happens a lot. Yeah. And um, unless you're a close knit company or family members or something like that, and even family members, we're going to have a lot of disagreements about what you can do and what you can't do. Right. So, you know. Yeah, no, I agree. Yeah. Well, I know if somebody had just posted this on LinkedIn and it goes right to what you're saying. Um, they said, you know, they posed the question that is it, is it that we need to work on leadership? Like what are the leadership, good leaders characteristics and have they changed over time? Or mm -hmm. if you've got the good characteristics, are they no matter what industry you're in, where you're at, those are it. And that was a good question. Cause initially I was like, yeah, I think you need to work on retraining leaders on how to be a good leader because along the way, like you said, they f seem to forget what yeah. really the what the what they should be doing, right? Mm -hmm. And what the ultimate goal is, which is, you know, I think you should always go back to servant leadership, right? They forget that. Yeah. Um, and so I thought that, but then I realized, wait a second, any book you read on good leadership identifies virtually the same leadership traits for all good leaders. So right. it's a good question. I don't know. I don't know the answer to it. Yeah. Yeah. So tell us a little bit about what kind of clients you like to work with. And and uh, I know you already said you work with them individually, but maybe you could just share, 
Sure. Yeah. So, you know, I, I do training. So I don't know, uh, Marilyn, if you're, if you're aware, but in California, if you work for any of the public state agencies, you have to go through, uh, the state requires every one of those supervisors. So if you want to be in a supervisory position, mm -hmm. you have to go through 80 hours of mandatory training. Yeah. All public sector supervisors. So I'm, I do all training for all, I do all 80 hours of that training. So I work a lot in the public sector. So I'm okay. familiar with public, public agencies and feel comfortable do, working with them. But I also obviously work for private sectors. So, you know, size doesn't matter. I mean, seriously, I, I've talked to, lately I've been talking to these startup companies. They're like, well, we're not big enough and money is really a concern. I'm like, there's no, if you've got one employee, you can start setting up the culture or right. else. Right. Yeah. yeah. And so what, what do you think? Can you give a couple of tips about uh, what kind of things they can start to set up the culture then since you've been working with a lot of them? Absolutely. I think, you know, again, making sure you have the leadership commitment to diversity and inclusion, um, making sure you have the accountability systems. And that means all throughout the whole organization, not just at the top, everybody right. from top to bottom and making sure that you have systems and policies and procedures set up so that if there is an incident reported, you take it seriously, you act promptly, and you're doing what you can to prevent the harassment from happening and address it right away when it does happen, right? So investigations have to be conducted. Uh, fair, so making sure the people that are conducting the investigations at your organization is up to speed. I mean, especially after the Me Too movement, courts are looking really hard at these investigation reports. And if investigators right. aren't, trained and know how to do these right they're just they're we're literally tossing them out of court right. so a lot of companies are having to spend extra money on bringing outside consultants when really you could do it right if you just get the proper tools set up to do it in-house right so, right 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 yeah. so so what you're recommending is number one is that they set up a game plan to you know, have a, a culture a program within their business that everybody's trained Sure. Um, I always kind of think if you start also with your mission and vision mm -hmm. and what you want, what you're willing to accept and what behavior you're not willing to accept. Sure. And then from there, you're going to have that training and they're going to hire you to come in and do the training for you. <laughs> and then from right. there, uh, then they, you go from there and see where else you can help them in that regard. Sure. Yeah. Sure. And, you know, I think, I think, I, I mean, really, I think you're doing some great work, Marilyn. Thanks so much for having me on here because I think I would love to get this message out more to people. Mm -hmm. You know, anybody that can listen to this is just, that's just a, such a value added because it's hard to get people to listen to what we're talking about, you know? Right. Right. Well, yeah, yeah because that means they have to spend money that's or right. take the time away from what their busyness is about. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. You know, and, uh, and then create a program but it's just like you know going to interviews you know like when i talk to people whether they're interviewing me or i'm just because kind of, you know it's both it's a two-way street like i'm also interviewing you do i really want to work with you you know kind of thing and they don't realize that and then yeah. when you ask about okay hey, what is your program what's your policy oh we have a very good policy and yeah stuff. and i said okay well what is it you know and they can't tell you because they really don't have it that's right. right. That's right. So, no, I mean, it, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's so simple, right? So yesterday yeah. night, I went, my roommate plays in hockey. He's a goalie for a hockey team here. And he was playing in San Francisco. And as I was watching the game, I was thinking about this podcast. And I was like, yeah. what can I, what can I, what tip can I give people? Right. And I was like, I really thought like, God, this game is one of the toughest games to play. I mean, everybody has to be coordinated. You're moving so fast. You got to get yeah. it into the goal. The goalie has to block. And there's so much going on, just like when you're running an or a corporation or right. a company. But if you can get everybody on, I mean, this was probably one of the best games I've seen. I mean, everybody was fighting hard. They were going for it. Yeah. Even when you're up or down, you just got to keep moving towards that goal. And I think I think what we're doing is kind of getting awareness out there that it, it is possible to actually. Yeah, we're trying to hit the goal net. That's right. Let's do it. Right. <laughs> the buck is, you know, having healthier workplaces. Yeah. 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 Okay. So, so you say you work in the, um, with the uh, public, you know, the supervisors of government employees and mm -hmm. things like that. And you have done some private sector stuff. So mm -hmm. tell us anything else that you would like any for all of us to know more about what you're doing and how you're doing. Yeah, I mean, I, you know, just this year, I started doing more public speaking just to kind of get more people to listen. Um, so I've done some 
um, conferences and I've done some roundtables for Society of Human Resource Management. So, you know, I would love to do some more of that just to kind of continue on getting the word out there. So I mm -hmm. welcome any opportunities like that if anybody's aware of. I've been doing a lot of diversity and inclusion work because I think that just, you know, we have so many risks that are there. So, you know, if you've got a, a total homogeneous company, you know, you're going to have more likelihood of having more harassment issues pop up than if you had a focus on diversity and inclusion. So there's just so much that we can do together. And so any way that we can kind of, I feel like collaborate and, and, and get the word out there, and I would welcome anybody to contact me to have that conversation. You know? Right, right. And so how can they contact you? Yeah, so my website is um, www.trainextra, that's T-R-A-I-N-X-T-R-A.com. And my email address is um, my first name, Stajal, S-E-J-A-L, at trainextra.com. And my phone number is area code 619-852-6529. Okay, great. So plus that everybody, when they come to listen to our, our call, um, you can, she has a page on uh, podcast.hardatwork online.org and you can read more about her bio and her contact information will be there as well so um yeah we really i really encourage you to reach out to all the people that are working in this space because as you know we're i can't believe after 20 years that we're everything has gotten worse rather than better so um we really want to make it better and i certainly want to make it better just like uh, say jail does too so um, in the meantime, we're going to let it go. And I want to thank everybody for joining us today if you're watching it live. If not, um, it will be it is recorded. And, uh, it'll be posted in, within the week. And uh, we'll be talking with you again, I'm sure. So um, any final words, tips, ideas? No, thank you so much. I had a great time today. Thank you. Okay, great. Okay, thank you, everybody. And we'll talk to you all later. And make yourself a kind day. Always be kind. Thank you.